You've all signed up for a class with a title that may not make a lot of sense to you. The concept of information literacy is something most of us don't think about, so it's perfectly understandable if you don't know what you're in for. You've all heard the term literacy. That means basically that you can read and write. Did you know that there's a lot of different kinds of literacy? There's financial literacy, health literacy, digital literacy, to name just a few. They all focus on being able to understand and use a certain type of information. That's not too complicated, right? So what does being information literate mean? At its core, information literacy is about being able to find what you need, evaluate what you find, and put it all together in order to understand, well, anything. Being information literate means more than just ability to find information. We're going to try to figure out if what you find is good. You also need to be able to make sense of it, which is easier said than done with a lot of college level information. And you need to be able to use or apply the information. FYI, you're already doing this in your life outside of college. What do you do when you need to make a big decision? Maybe buy something pricey like a washer and dryer, a computer or a car, or maybe choose where to go to college or what to study. In step one, you need to find information. In the case of buying a car, you can look for reviews in places like Edmunds.com, Consumer Reports, Google, or dozens of other online sources. You can also ask family, friends, and coworkers. In step two, you need to evaluate the truthiness of the information. Would you trust the car dealership to give you a 100% unbiased review of the car? Of course not. They have a horse in the race. In step three, you need to take all the information you have, whether it's reviews, trusted testimonials, test rides, mechanic inspections, to decide if the car is worth the expense. See, you already know how to find, evaluate, and use information sources. This is actually being information literate. Okay, so this class is not about teaching you how to buy a car, though that certainly would be helpful. I want you to learn how to take those three steps of finding, evaluating, and synthesizing information to make your future papers, speeches, projects, and so on awesome, both in college and beyond. Okay, there you are, minding your own business when a professor assigns a project that requires you to find information, say, like this assignment listed here. You may think to yourself, it's no big deal. I can find most of what I need on Google, and I've got until the end of the semester anyway. So much time. Full speed ahead, right? Well, a lot of these assignments include specific tasks, like writing a paper on a particular topic, finding scholarly articles, picking your own topic, and synthesizing the information. Maybe you found that Google isn't giving you what you need, or maybe you can't get to the articles you need. If you're new to this, or it's been a while since you've done research, your internal traffic light may be putting up a warning. Oh no, not the library, and it's millions of shelves, and it's zillions of databases. Spare me from that fate. Here's where the inexperienced, or I hate to say it, also the overconfident students come to a dead stop. Where do I start? How do I search for what I need? How do I actually get what I want? How do I understand and make use of the articles, books, etc.? This course is about turning this red-like panic into a green, I can do this. One of the main purposes of a general education course like this one is to help you be a successful college student. But one of my goals is to make sure you take this beyond school and use it in your professional life. I used to be a librarian in a hospital, and I can tell you from firsthand experience that your need for information doesn't stop when you graduate, especially for those of you in healthcare. Sometimes you have a patient with a rare case or a rare reaction, and you have to figure out how best to treat them. Or, and I saw this one a lot, there's a physician who you know is using procedures or therapies that are out of date, and you need information to help convince him to change. There are about a million reasons why you need to be able to find, evaluate, and apply research in your work. Along the joyous route of learning about information literacy, we're going to cover issues like the cost of information, how to evaluate what you find, how to read for research, how to cite sources and stay organized, how to choose a topic that won't bore you to death, some cool search tips to make your life easier, how to search for articles and books, 
and even how to make the best use of Google for college level research. Yes, this is all related to information literacy. So exciting. In all seriousness, being information literate is ultimately going to make your life easier, both in school and once you're out in your profession.